what's up guys hope everybody's doing well and having a great day in this video we're going to look at some before and after pictures from the daytona beach area these are obviously before this is at google earth but this location right here looks nothing like it does today and they're actually quite shocking to be honest with you this area was overwhelmed with the, the high tide and the, the outer bands of the storm because the eye wall of the storm made landfall well south of the Daytona Beach area. But the, the strong outer bands and that counterclockwise rotation in conjunction with that energy making landfall with high tide. Even though the eye wall was out here, the high tide was around 9, 930 when those outer bands were influencing the east coast of Florida, especially north of the eye wall. And you can see the eye wall here due east of Port St. Lucie, well, the, the outer bands were already interacting with the land, and this was at 9 p.m. on November the 9th. The official landfall south of Daytona Beach was in the early morning hours of November the 10th, but we're going to come back and look at this area right here. In fact, this specific area that looks nothing like it does today after the impacts of Hurricane Nicole uh, less than 48 hours ago. We're going to come back and take a look at those photos here in in just a moment but first over here at the home page of the website I'd like to thank Jan out of Oracle Arizona for the really cool photo from the the recent lunar eclipse that included a bright meteor how about that thank you Jan from Oracle Arizona quick look at the Schumann resonance a little bit of data missing for some reason there's a three hour gap between the 10th and the 11th of no data and have no idea why other than that it's pretty quiet really no major spikes hopping over to the Yellowstone Super Bowl Volcano Caldera, looking at the seismographs that, that monitor the mighty supervolcano, you probably already noticed the, the red vertical lines, that signature represents earthquake activity, but this earthquake activity that it detected was from the 7.3, clear down in Tonga, it was a very strong shallow quake that was detected all the way up here at the Yellowstone supervolcano Caldera, other than that, pretty quiet at the supervolcano, quick look at Lake Mead, the water database, once again, going south had several days now of negative readings at Lake Mead and the same situation at Lake Powell several days of negative readings so both of the water contents at Lake Mead and Lake Powell are currently shrinking I want to take you guys now back to Daytona Beach where Daytona Beach shores an area that we were just at this is called Wilbur by the Sea and this specific house you're you're going to see something here quite unfortunate Unprecedented. I mean, Hurricane Ian made landfall as a Category 4 storm. And right at the point of impact where the eye wall made landfall, the, the damage was unbelievable. This storm here, the majority of the damage was well north of the, the eye wall. And again, it was timing. It was in conjunction with the, the high tide. And, and the tides came up into this area extremely high, overwhelming the seawall here. And it washed away all of this land and as you're going to see in photos this coastline here has been forever changed it's no longer here at least this part of it is completely gone and we're going back over here to clickorlando.com and the headline article says nicole causes unprecedented structural damage to 49 volusia beachfront buildings erosion from the hurricane took out sand dunes sea walls and foundations and this photo right here you can see this young lady standing here she is literally standing underneath this swimming pool right here. All of that sand is gone. And not only just here, up and down the beach, there are several buildings, tall buildings, that had to be evacuated that are currently closed. I'm going to show you that list here in just a moment. But see the yellow house and notice the, the banister up there at the top? Watch this photo here. It lines up perfectly with this pool. There's the banister. You're looking at the underside of the pool. There's the porch. And the only thing holding up the pool, the, the sand is obviously gone, are these tall poles right here. Same thing with this porch. Those poles underneath the porch are the only thing holding that porch aloft. Right there is the porch. See it? And right there, 
all that grass, all that sand. There's the seawall right there. The water from Hurricane Nicole and the onshore flow in conjunction with the high tide, the water came way up into here and washed away all this sand. This specific area is known as Wilbur by the Sea, and it was impacted very, very hard, as you can see from the photos, by Hurricane Nicole. And not only this area, but goes up into the Daytona Beach Shores area. The structure right here at 3311 Atlantic Avenue, this building right here is closed. It had to be evacuated because the ground has been compromised from the severe erosion from Hurricane Nicole. So not only did Ian impact the east coast of Florida, so did Nicole. And again, it was about the timing. It didn't necessarily make landfall during the high tide, but it didn't have to because these outer bands were already at work pushing in the water. The waves in this area were forecasted to be in the neighborhood of 28 feet. And that would have pushed the water well inland and it washed away a lot of this sand. It created extreme erosion. This building right here is one of many on this list right here. Look at this list. Look how long it is. All of those buildings are closed right now. And these are resorts, hotels. There were 25 single family homes in the Wilbur by the Sea area that were evacuated. And one of those homes was the one that I just showed you with the swimming pool dangling in the air. And that's right in this area here where that young lady was doing a report. And most of this coastline right here is completely changed forever. A lot of these swimming pools I'm sure aren't there anymore. I know this one right here, we could see the bottom of it in this picture right there. She's standing underneath that pool now. Again, there's the porch. There's the gray house next to the yellow house, and you can see the gray house on Google Earth right there. And all you can see is the backside of the house. The rest of this area here is completely gone. Look, completely gone. There's nothing there but a cliff. And this is just one area. This goes to the left and it goes to the right. And not only there, but in the intracoastal area over here. There's homes over here on the other side of this area back here that were impacted as well. I'm going to show you guys an example. This swimming pool was being pushed out of the ground well before the storm made landfall. And I'm talking about 16 to 18 hours before the storm made landfall. And this swimming pool that you see being forced out of the ground, this is Daytona Beach right over here in the background. And this is along the Halifax River. And that location is right back here. And it's looking this direction. Those buildings that you just saw were those same buildings right here that were temporarily closed, the house is right back here, that the swimming pool was being pushed up out of the ground from the onshore flow of the, the very strong storm surge. And a lot of these buildings along here, again, are on this list you see right here. It's just one after another after another. And nobody was really expecting too much from, from Hurricane Nicole, considering it was just a Category 1 storm. But one thing that did influence the, the strength of this storm was its timing in conjunction with the high tide. And those outer bands, again, were working on the shoreline well before before the eye wall even got close to the shoreline. You can see right here, this is at 5.20 p.m. on November the 9th, and the outer bands were already impacting the east coast of Florida, and the eye wall wasn't even close to making landfall yet. So that's just one of many examples, guys, of the, the shoreline along the east coast of Florida that has been changed forever. Most of these structures you see right here have been closed, at least temporarily, until they can be thoroughly inspected, making sure the foundation are in good shape after the landfall of Hurricane Nicole. And up here, it wasn't the landfall. It wasn't the eye wall. It wasn't necessarily the high winds. It was the onshore flow of the water, the high tide coming in, washing away the, the shoreline here that's been changed forever. This area right here, this is a before, and here's yet another look at an after photo of this area, and it will never be the same. The amount of erosion created by that Category 1 storm was definitely unprecedented. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.